In this short uh, summary video, I'm going to, in hopefully under five minutes, uh, give you an overview of the work presented in a paper published back in 2013 in the Journal for Structural and Multidisciplinary Optimization, titled Design Optimization Using Computational Fluid Dynamics Applied to a Land Based Supersonic Vehicle, the Bloodhound Supersonic Car. This was uh, a piece of collaborative work between uh, myself and colleagues at Swansea University, uh, a team of engineers uh, working directly for the Bloodhound Land Speed Record project, um, and also uh, some engineers working for, for MathWorks. So the problem uh, that we were given at the start of this project uh, was that the rear of the Bloodhound supersonic car, about halfway through the, the overall design process for the vehicle, was generating far too much lift at supersonic speeds. In fact, by about Mach 1.1, um, the configuration of the car that we'd arrived at was generating about 13, 14 tonnes of lift, which, uh, given that the car weighs around about half that, is clearly too much. Um, in fact, the more, the more complex problem was not just the absolute lift um, at supersonic speeds, it was the fact that the lift was varying so significantly between small amounts of downforce at subsonic speeds here on this blue curve going up to by Mach 1.1 huge significant amount uh, significant amounts of lift we knew that this was being driven by phenomenon at the rear of the car by separating this total lift force into the force that's being generated at the rear of the car and the force generated at the front of the car in terms of reaction loads at the front and rear wheels so the green curve here is the force being reacted, the vertical force being reacted at the rear of the car. Through CFD studies, we were able to analyze what was going on in terms of the aerodynamic phenomenon in this complex geometry part of the car, where you've got uh, the fuselage, the bodywork tapering down towards the jet engine and the, the position of the rocket, the suspension systems, suspension arms going out to the, uh, the rear wheels of the vehicle. Um, and essentially the problem that we identified was that this kind of rear diffuser type underside geometry at low speed was was behaving, I guess, like a classic underside diffuser in that it was generating suction, in fact, because the flow is compressible, the flow is expanding through this diffuser, uh, generating significant, uh, significant low pressures uh, manifesting as, as downforce. But as soon as the transonic regime uh, was entered, and the shockwave started being uh, predicted, particularly generated by the, these bulky rear wheels and suspension systems, that that downforce quickly disappeared and became uh, positive pressure and therefore lift. Um, I should mention that all of this was analyzed using the flight uh, 3D CFD code developed within Swansea University, uh, the College of Engineering here, and the specifics about that solver and how it was applied in the context of the Bloodhound project were detailed in a previous publication uh, in Numerical Methods for Partial Differential Equations back in 2011. The details of that publication uh, are here. In the work detailed in, in this paper that I'm summarising, um, essentially we used a design of experiment style approach to try and understand this complex high dimensional design space that we were dealing with. The first part of the problem was to simplify the geometry so that it could be parameterized. So we simplified the geometry um, so that it was defined by about 15 to 20 um, clearly defined parameters, um, but simplified in such a way that the, 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 the geometry that resulted was still capturing the fundamental physics of the problem at hand. We then basically did a, a parameter sweep about a midpoint position to, to minimum maximum values based on kind of geometric and other engineering constraints to try and figure out which of these parameters were the main drivers of this problem. And it turned out that there were five parameters, one, two, three, four, five, that were the real key factors in, in generating or, or determining the, the change in vertical loads between subsonic and supersonic speeds. So we, um, if I just go back for a moment, we, we sampled that five dimensional design space uh, using a, a central composite design in a, a design of experiments uh, uh, philosophy and having run the geometry using the CFD system 
at the design point specified by that uh, sampling process, we were then able to try and fit response surface, statistical descriptions or, uh, of that data. Um, we analyzed a range of different response surface options, discovered which response surface best represented the data that we had from our CFD sampling, and then we were able to use that response surface to inform a gradient, uh, a gradient based optimizer to try and find what we believed was the geometry uh, that generated the minimum change. Uh, the, I mean, the key objective function in this work was, was minimizing the change in vertical load between the subsonic and supersonic uh, behavior, uh, whilst where possible, if possible, minimizing uh, the drag and certainly not increasing the drag on the car because that was another pressing issue at this point in the design process. What the optimizer um, returned to us was a, a geometry definition for the rear of the car, and this is the post-optimized geometry. And in fact, it's the geometry that has now gone on uh, to be built and is currently being tested um, in, in, in the real uh, Bloodhound car. Importantly, in terms of the, the vertical force response, we managed to, to change uh, this total lift curve from looking more like a gradient that looked like this in the pre-optimized case to a much flatter curve where we're generating small amounts of downforce at subsonic speeds, here this is Mach 0.5, through to relatively small. We are still generating some lift, but it's a much more manageable amount of lift. And what's important is the change in vertical load between subsonic and supersonic conditions has been uh, reduced. At the same time as doing all of that, we actually managed to pull the drag curve down right across the Mach range. If you want any more details about uh, this work, uh, or any details about how you can access this paper, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Here's my email address um, or contact me on Twitter.